Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and this time we're going to discuss something that we've discussed many times before, but it looks like, uh, yeah, there might have been a mistake. Not made by me, but made by a lot of scientists working with incomplete data. And so basically here, the title of this video is probably going to be something like, uh, looks like we were wrong about the Milky Way and the Andromeda collision, because that's basically what the video is about. The collision between our galaxy and the Andromeda that has been discussed in many previous videos before that many scientists believed would eventually happen, currently, based on some of the most recent observations, may not be so certain after all. And so in this video we're going to discuss some of these new discoveries, what this essentially means for our galaxy, and of course what's being proposed now. But I guess first, as always, let's start with a bit of a history. And mostly to help you understand why we always thought that these two galaxies are actually on a collision course. And all of this technically starts over a hundred years ago. The American astronomer by the name Vesto Slipher was trying to examine Andromeda Galaxy sometimes around 1912. And back then astronomers didn't even know galaxies actually existed. For approximately two more decades, most astronomers assumed that these galaxies were basically unusual nebula. Nebula inside our own galaxy. So back then astronomers thought that the universe was much, much smaller sort of the size of a typical galaxy. And you can learn about this concept of discovering the entire universe in one of the previous videos in the description. And so while Vestus Lifer was looking at Andromeda, he noticed something very unusual. This peculiar nebula was actually blue shifted, suggesting that it was basically moving toward planet Earth at a relatively high velocity of approximately 110 km per second or 65 miles per second. And not so long afterwards, basically when we realized that these are galaxies, researchers realized that there's actually a very high chance that this galaxy at some point will collide with the Milky Way. But up until early 2000s, all of this was super hypothetical and extremely uncertain. But once we got the Hubble telescope and once the researchers started to observe some of the stars inside this galaxy, they were able to collect various types of data in regards to the positions of stars inside this galaxy in relation to various background galaxies and everything else around the Andromeda. And by collecting a lot of data for approximately one decade, so basically between 2002 and approximately 2010, sometimes around 2012, several papers came out suggesting that our two galaxies, despite relatively large distances, seem to be on the collision course. This was discovered by analyzing thousands of different stars and the relative motion compared to galaxies behind them. But even though in this case the velocity toward us was pretty accurate, so approximately 110 km per second, it was still somewhat difficult to establish the lateral or sideways velocity. So basically here we knew that the stars are headed toward us, but would they also had it left or right, or would they just head it directly for us? So that's obviously not something we could establish yet. On top of this, this was way before we discovered a lot of satellites around the Milky Way and the Andromeda, and so back then the knowledge of the so-called local group was actually kind of minimal. Here the local group basically refers to all of the local galaxies, including all of the satellite galaxies, of which we've actually discovered so many in just the last decade. As a matter of fact, some of the biggest discoveries and some of the most unusual galaxies were only discovered in the last 10 years. For example, galaxies like Antlia 2, which was not even visible until recently, was literally hiding in plain sight, with two more galaxies around the Milky Way discovered in 2024 alone. And because of various discoveries in the last few years, modern theories suggest that our galaxy potentially has several hundred different satellites, as opposed to just having like five or six back when these calculations were initially conducted. And this particular fact is going to be super important in just a moment. Either way though, following the initial assumption that these two galaxies are colliding, quite a lot of simulations, including this one, basically tried to recreate what all of this might look like. And back then, the result of this collision started to be referred to as Milkdromeda, something that would possibly happen in approximately 5 billion years from now with several studies even trying to predict what's actually going to happen to the solar system and planet Earth. Well, by then planet Earth would actually be super hot, so obviously there would be no life here, but the sun would still be around. And here the simulation suggested that either the sun gets kicked out from the galaxy, or it potentially approaches the inner galaxy, possibly even super close to the central black hole, which might even shred it apart. But obviously all of these were just assumptions, and as you're going to discover now, were probably completely incorrect. But galactic collisions in Andromeda and the Milky Way have obviously happened many times. 
As a matter of fact, in one of the most recent studies from 2023, researchers even found evidence for what seems to be a major galactic collision in the Andromeda that possibly happened just 1 billion years ago. Moreover, we've also discovered signs of recent collisions in the Milky Way, and we know that galaxies like Sagittarius Dwarf Spherical Galaxy are currently colliding with the Milky Way as well. At the moment, not much remains of this galaxy, but it's still kind of there and it's still kind of visible. Alright, well, let's get to the point. So what about the Andromeda and the Milky Way? Well, now we get this recent study based on some of the most advanced observations and it essentially suggests that the Andromeda-Milky Way collision may not actually happen at all, or if it does happen, it's going to be much, much later. And Till Sawala and his team came to this conclusion for one simple reason. The most recent and extremely accurate observations from the Gaia telescope that allows us to measure the motion of the stars super accurately, mixed with new simulations that didn't just include two galaxies in it, like the one that you see right here, but also included other masses around these galaxies, including some of the largest satellites. And so once these new simulations were ran, researchers realized that there's just way too much uncertainty right now when it comes to motions of some of these stars used previously, but also other galaxies, such as satellite galaxies, that definitely play a super important gravitational role when it comes to this collision. And so here, depending on the situation, these galactic collisions end up in a lot of different scenarios, with many of them resulting in no collision whatsoever. But approximately 50% do result in a collision, although in this case, maybe in about 10 billion years. Not 4.5 or 5 billion years, as we previously believed. And yet by then, the solar system is definitely going to transition into something entirely different. And so in essence, in this particular study, the important addition was the so-called confounding factor, involving various gravitational effects of a lot of smaller galaxies that we definitely know exist everywhere around us. As I mentioned previously, there's possibly up to 500 tiny galaxies around the Milky Way, as suggested in one of the recent studies you can learn about in one of the links in the description. And each of these hundreds of galaxies provides an individual pool slightly shifting the Andromeda and the Milky Way as they're headed toward each other. And because the current distance between the galaxies is actually pretty far, two and a half million light years away from each other, it essentially means that there's a high chance these galaxies are going to miss. So just to give you a visual example, right there on the right, that's the Andromeda, and on the left, that's the Milky Way. So they're still pretty far from each other and are technically moving really slow. And since Andromeda is also highly influenced by the Triangulum Galaxy, the M83 you see right there, this makes this trajectory prediction super challenging. And even if it does happen, it's definitely not going to resemble what you see right here. It's going to be way more complicated and involve a lot more galaxies. But at some point in the next few years, we might actually have our final answer. And that's because Gaia Telescope is going to be releasing its new data, which will hopefully be enough to establish the exact trajectory of not just these galaxies, but also satellites around us. And though at some point, billions of years from now, we do expect all of these galaxies to basically become just one large galaxy, based on this new study, all of this might take much, much longer, possibly over 100 billion years, for everything to finally collide. But when it comes to Earth, and specifically life on Earth, we're definitely not going to witness any of this. Within the next 500 million years, to possibly 1 billion years, the sun is going to become hot enough to basically evaporate oceans, potentially stopping the plate tectonics, which will very likely end most complex life on planet Earth. There might be some bacteria for like a billion years or so, but by the time these galaxies come even close to each other, all life will be extinct. And Earth, if it's still around and somehow survives the red giant stage of our sun, will eventually have its night skies transformed completely. And at some point, possibly in the next 100 billion years, it's going to resemble something like this. That's essentially when all of the galaxies combine into a large elliptical galaxy, which may or may not transform afterwards. But, at least for now, looks like, maybe, Andromeda and the Milky Way might still orbit each other and potentially not collide for a much, much longer period of time than we initially thought. And so quite a lot of videos I made previously, I guess like 5, 6, 7 years ago, now essentially become, uh, I guess, completely wrong. But that's the beauty of science. Sometimes you get new facts and you have to revise everything. And right now the observations and the simulations in this paper seem to be the most accurate. And so until future studies or new discoveries about the collision, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, 
Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.